There's a new economic force in America today, the swinging singles. 24 million unabashed and unwed adults, privileged and envied, with few inhibitions about their marital status. For the lack of a wedding ring no longer suggests failure. Today, their effervescent lifestyle just means we're swingers. Marriage, they say, forget it. Yeah, I'm having too much fun right now. I've, I don't know. I've got too many things I want to do and places I want to see. Maybe two or three years when I meet the right one. But I'm not looking right now. I'm having too much fun. I wouldn't mind ever getting married. I miss children. I would love to have children. And someday that'll be possible, too, for a woman to have children without being married, and it'll be accepted. And when that happens, that'll be nice. It's a new breed that is, that is affluent and independent mm -hmm. and satisfied with itself. Mm -hmm. Well, they have money. They have more money. They can travel. Uh, they can do things that they couldn't do, that their parents couldn't do. Therefore, they're seeking something. I don't know exactly what they're looking for. Um, because, of course, I don't know what I'm looking for either, you know, and that, um, for the end result. Um, but everything is just so easy. Sex and marriage and divorce is so easy. You get married, you don't have to really ever think it's forever. You know, you just do it, and if it works out, great, and if not, get divorced. The basic yearning of playboy and playgirl has become trendy commercial enterprise. Amid crumbling restrictions, clannish singletons populate whole sections of cities, gravitating towards businessmen who offer a single-minded supermarket of activities. This two million pound apartment city in Los Angeles, with some 3,000 available singles, has been called, doubtless by beaten down married men, Sin City or Love with a Lease. We're trying to sell them a, a way of life that uh, these people are all well educated, uh, they're well uh, 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 from, a social law, uh, from a social background, if you will. They come from very fine families in most cases. Uh, well, they don't. There's just a, there's a lot of stenographers and clerks here uh, as well. Yeah. That fact makes no difference of what they are today, all right? Yeah. You, know, you and I are what we are today, our family background, what you think. These people are nice people, they're well educated, they're well trained. The point is that they represent, in my opinion, in the United States, the first affluent society. You're obviously not a uh, guardian of public morals, but I suppose you do lay yourselves open to all sorts of criticism. Uh, we perhaps lay ourselves open to criticism. Uh, we don't do it intentionally. That uh, Each of these people is a mature adult. He's a legal adult. He's a well-educated adult. Uh, that uh, we don't interfere in his life as long as uh, he uh, acknowledges the proprieties in life. You can't concern yourself with what goes on behind closed doors? Uh, under no circumstances. Just so long as they don't frighten the horses. <laughs> that's, that's true. <laughs> what um, actually drew you to this place? The same, I think, as anyone else. Uh, people. I wanted to meet people. I was uh, Men? Mostly men, yes. I have uh, to be honest. Uh, have you met men? Many, yes. Uh, I mean, it's lived up to his reputation. Oh, yes. You, if you want men, there are plenty of them here. Of course, they may not be your type of men, but uh, there's certainly a lot of them here. I would probably have a better chance of getting a better selection here <laughs> than yeah. I would in any apartment house. You instant, know? instant selection. Instant selection. <laughs> <laughs> because it's... Uh, the people in these things, there's not, there's many more men than there are girls, so uh, the ch chances are much better in a place like this. And like I said, there weren't the old people hanging over you, making you feel that you're wrong not to be married, because it isn't wrong not to be married. Really. You can see the merchandise before you get involved with it. Yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, what a callous attitude. And of course. <laughs> As you, uh, as you add on a few years, your earnings become higher, and this enables you to uh, party a little more and live it up a little more. It makes you more attractive. It makes you more attractive to the, to the younger girls, let's be honest. Isn't there a danger, though, for someone of, of, uh, uh, who's slightly older than the average here, to, that you might be regarded as a dirty old man? <laughs> well, dirty old man is as dirty old man is. If you're a dirty old man, you're a dirty old man any time. But, uh, uh, you can be a clean old man, too. <laughs> and uh, if you want to chase around after little chicks here and you think that's your cup of tea, then you might be called a dirty old man. But there's enough, uh, enough people here mature enough to appreciate the better facilities. The facilities, greatly appreciated, lie around all day. 
gambling continues at night when they chance their arms on finding the right sort of opposite sex, which can still be something of a gamble. To limit risk, there's a rash of dating agencies. Your statistics and desires are fed into computers which regurgitate an endless supply of ideal dates. It's a very long way from those matrimonial agency aunties in backstreet offices. Singles in San Francisco wanting immediate action are brought together within these machines by an ambitious accountant from Kensington. You don't seem to me to be much of a cupid. You're more of a, of a businessman. As far as I'm concerned, the computer is, is the whole business. I look on this as a whole area for single people. Now, as computer dating is just one of the many services that we can provide for single people. So you are getting a reservoir mm. of single people and you're using this reservoir mm -hmm. for other businesses? Yes, yes. And uh, what, what way are you using it? Well, we have uh, social organizations, we have cocktail parties, we have dances, we have a bridge club, we, we have ski trips, ski weekends, uh, theater evenings. Uh, we have quite a, a large travel program. In fact, we, we have a chartered flight going to London this summer. This is the shape of the future. Maybe in England it hasn't come yet. I think it will pretty soon. Maybe It may take a few more years, I don't know, to be sophisticated. But you take any type of market, whether it's the single person, the old age person, the married person, the newlywed, or anyone, you take any type of service, you tailor make that service for the segment of the population that you are trying to reach. So major resorts reach out to swingles. The Concord, biggest of them all up in the Catskills, holds frenetic weekends for 3,000 singles, for they've got the spending money today. Free of mortgages, school fees, insurance premiums, they're courted not only by each other, but by big business. From Manhattan chasms, from New York dormitory areas, swingles converge for their unmatched mating frenzy, going towards some electric encounter that'll change their destiny. A mother who used to send her daughter up years ago said, now you go up to the Concord and uh, come back with a doctor, so to speak, you know, and that's gone. You can't tell a youngster today uh, go up and find a doctor. Uh, the mother may uh, very subtly say, why don't you go to Concord? And the girl knows what the uh, rest of the story is. It's different than it was five years ago. Uh, the average girl today will be making ten or twelve thousand dollars a year, which is a lot of money. And so they become uh, more, much more independent. They don't have to go to Papa uh, for money. They have their own money. And naturally, when they come up to a place like this, uh, they might uh, be uh, too uh, reticent, uh, too backward, because they are self-sufficient, which they weren't years ago. Any girl who wants to look presentable can, uh, with makeup, with the modern dressing, uh, they look cute, they have different hair combs, and uh, perhaps uh, a little plastic surgery here and there, which is prevalent today. I'm not trying to make a joke out of it. And uh, they're all cute, they're beautiful. There's no such thing as a, a, an ugly girl anymore. No more. Apart from the education, how has the behavior of the singles changed over the years? Uh, it isn't as boisterous as it used to be, where uh, a girl would flaunt, as I said before, what she had, and a man who was a very calm and complacent uh, individual in the office used to come up here, and, and he became the big male animal, so to speak. You can sit in the lobby here for an entire weekend and watch this thing. Uh, it's a show by itself. It's Yet despite the new trend, through their bright, free, independent life of unquestioned decisions, runs the same old fear, loneliness. So girls on the panic side of 25, men still adolescent at 30, shine up hopes and courage for these predatory weekends. Even the new swinging lifestyle knows its anxieties. However contented they may be with their swingle status, they're still looking around. I want to meet a boy. I want to meet a man. Let's separate the boys from the men. Mm -hmm. There are an awful lot of boys around. 
which is not what I'm seeking. Oh, boys. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I like a man. In other words, I like my tea weak and my men strong, who's arrived at some status in life and who has a joie de vie and um, good sense of humor and who loves women. <laughs> Now, do you think you're more likely to meet him here than, uh, let's say, on a cruise? I think cruise? you can meet him any place, actually. You can meet him here and you can meet him on a cruise. You can meet him any place. This is hard to say. Do you go looking for him in any I'm other... I'm looking all the time. <laughs> <laughs> looking for a wife. Truly? Truly. Yeah. i got to get married. Yes. i got to get married sometime. May I ask how old you are? Uh, 35. So you'd be above uh, the age of a lot of the girls here. Yes. Uh, I didn't figure there'd be so many young girls around here. A lot of men in your position would be very pleased to meet a lot of young girls. Yeah, and a lot of people... Uh, I don't know. I don't know if a lot of young girls would want to meet me. You get the, you know, the, the mod type of fellow who just dresses up for this weekend and puts all his best clothes on and then he goes and home. And with the girls, too. Well, yeah, the it's unfair. The girls are doing it, too. It's like but, a show. Uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's like a like show. it's like a big show. Exactly. And it's not, I don't want a phony. It's what you're going to get up here. They're all phonies. Most of them. Well, not all. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Well, what about the girls? The, the, the girls are all phonies. The girls are all phonies. The girls are all Sure, it's a big put on the whole weekend. Is it? Yeah, it's the truth. I think it's we're playing a game, you know, it's like the singles game. So is it worth it? It costs you quite a bit to come up here, doesn't it? Yeah, I'd say so. Now, all four of you in one room. Yeah. Right. right. How, much, how much does that cost? Uh, Sixty-something. Sixty-two hours for the weekend. Sixty-two dollars for the weekend. Yeah, yeah. But well, we're teachers, so we can afford it. <laughs> Are you? What do you teach? Oh, no, you gotta teach me. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> you just said. I do. Teach as well? Teach sex education. Sex. The management promises two men for every three women. The, the girls say that's the most padded figure here. They may be divorced with seven children, but they're still swingles, a glut of hungering flesh. And amid communal tumult, all appetites are catered for. This, say the ads, is where the fun is. For the singles label now suggests, as in tennis, an endeavour more vigorous, more skilled, and much more fun than mere doubles. I can have a fine weekend and have a good time if I get out. I've had my wine, like 10 or 11 glasses of it, and I'll have my Negronis, and I'll play my golf, and I'll get dressed up, have you ever tried and it'll be just fine with me. I'd like to get married again, but I'm just not that anxious for it. But certainly I like men in my life, and I'm constantly seeking men. Have you and joined, for example, of any of these matrimonial agencies, these computer, no. computer dating? No, I haven't gone in for that, Alan, because... Um, Somehow, I felt that was demeaning. But many thousands are not too proud to demean themselves, to seek instant mating, to dial one of the magic numbers advertised in the newspapers which hold out such promise, even to the practically unmatchable. Hello, my name is Alan Wicker. Thank and you for calling Human Inventory. Maybe you've had a disappointing divorce, or maybe you have not yet married. In any case, if you're like most unattached people, you'd like to meet members of the opposite sex who are attractive to you. They must satisfy your level of expectation, share your interests, and have personality traits that are agreeable with yours. What do you truly enjoy? If you can match men to jobs, they say, why not men to women? Certainly the old-fashioned way of meeting and mating is not proving too successful. One in every four American marriages ends in divorce. In California, there are more divorces than marriages. We select friends for you who are worthy of your background and accomplishment. They are chosen in accordance with your needs. Then we keep on doing this for you month after month. Surrendering to that recorded come on and the agency's improbable neighbors, I completed these psychological tests. We are now entering your results of all these tests into the inventory information retrieval system. You've been uh, tested uh, through various psychological traits, uh, how warm a person you are uh, emotionally and uh, uh, what degree of that you would desire in somebody else has all been ascertained by the psychological tests. Uh, the degree to which you uh, like to manipulate other people, 
and uh, the degree to which uh, you permit other people to manipulate you has all been measured. Do you believe that I will have revealed, in those two or three hundred questions that I've answered, that I will have revealed these facets of my personality that wouldn't be apparent to her? Well, uh, the answer is yes, to the extent that, that science and, this, and the whole field of psychology have been able to arrive up to this point. Now, this is the part of the process, Alan, where we make selections for you from our inventory of women. Good, good. And we shall be uh, uh, doing a better job of selecting women for you in just a few minutes mm -hmm. than you could do if you lived two or three lifetimes. That's what we claim we can do. Uh, these cards have a capacity of 10,000 holes in each, ho in each card. Uh, each hole represents a person. Now, this card is, is, is labeled uh, female, meaning every all the people drilled in this card are females. So we put that on as the first card. So <clears throat> now we come to height. All those of the proper height for you, which we have here, all women under 5 feet 6, are in this card. So we put that on top there. People with low outdoor interests, and you have low outdoor interests, correct? Uh, we want that to be alike, and so therefore we put that low outdoor interest card on there. Now that cuts down quite a number of people. Each time we put a card on, of course, it cuts down, it cuts down, cuts down it? the number of mm -hmm. people that are appropriate for you. We have here a card on, as on high aesthetic interest. Let's put that on. Now, as we put that on, that, that's going to cut down people to quite an extent because uh, I'd say there's a minority of people who have a, a high, as high an aesthetic interest as you have. So therefore, let's see what we have in the way of selections for you. So one of those unsuspecting little darts doesn't realize uh, what's coming her way. And that's true. Let's see. The first one we would select for you here is number 7670. That's the first selection for you. Uh, the next one is number 7302. The next one is uh, 5014. Uh, the next one is uh, 3414. Now, that's four selections for you. And that's my, that's my and, month's and, supply. And that's, that's your month's supply. Four charming ladies who meet all these specifications of yours. There can be a difference, of course, between specification and the actual model. It was an anxious time. My first date could be anyone. For those tests concerned obscure facets like nurture and support and social extroversion. Then along comes Virgin Horn. First husband, a surgeon. Second, an engineer. Third, well, only the computer could guess that. The computer produces the phone numbers, but you have to generate your own sparks. I was interested in being matched with people who were professional people and um, I was told that uh, about 90% of the people were professional people. So I enrolled and uh, then I received my three names. And, and, and? Well, I kept them about four months before I had nerve to make any contact. And when I did make contact, um, I was introduced to a man who, in the course of our conversation, told me that he had read a book. A book? Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a book about Errol Flynn. And uh, this came as rather a surprise, because I, I, I didn't see how they could match my uh, papers with papers that he had filled out. And that's about, uh, that's about all that we had to talk about, the fact that we weren't really compatible. Well, you, you didn't do too well on your first draw from the computer, and you've obviously had a bit of a nasty shock today. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what will you do in future? Oh, well, I would never consider um, being involved again. You wouldn't? No. Well, now, you, if you want to get married again, mm -hmm. will you now try some other methods, like a, a singles week no, at a no, hotel? No, no, Win or lose, the salesmen make a good living. For big cities are the home of the lonely crowd, and Los Angeles, which speaks of the future, is a place of strangers anxious to submit to a spiel, to pay a price to be compatible with someone. So let's say you were compatible with an individual in 49 of the 50 areas. 
you really would get along fine. But the one area you didn't get along in, he was a slob. This, of course, would be a detriment to any permanent relationship. We guarantee Donna, in writing by contract, from two to ten referrals every 30 days for a period of five years. That means between two and ten new people every 30 days for a period of five years, or how often you want to use the program. It's kind of fantastic. All the members of the program are investigated. We have now approximately a quarter of a million people in our program, Donna, of which 90% are basically professional type people like yourself. Uh, I think the reason for this is that without being demeaning, the average person who oh, maybe works in a gas station or the gal that works as a waitress is just not interested mm -hmm. in our type of program. What we basically do is bring the right kind of people together with the right kind of people. The cost of the program, Donna, is $395. Uh, and what we have to do now is the mental ability test I was telling you about. We'll take that now. It's a half hour time test. Mm -hmm. You feel pretty alert? 165 pounds from a single who, despite everything, wants to be double. So one begins to wonder, are swingles really so happy? Some are and some are very unhappy and they're looking constantly. They go to one hotel bar after another or every young place, every discotheque in New York, every private club, constantly looking. And uh, they come to a hotel and they look, you know, and they seek and they really, they're panicked. But those girls are never going to find happiness. Not, not so frightened the way they are. Most of the women are so scared, so frightened. That, you know, they're, uh, they'll marry anyone who asks them, really. You know, um, it's a very sad situation. <laughs> it really is. So much to accomplish, so little time. For the men and women who stayed too long at the party. Who travel single in a world that counts by twos. The leftovers in the mating game, unconvinced by advertisers' playboy, playgirl fantasies, and here to be chivied into each other's arms. Come on, gentlemen, don't be slow. There must be a lady you would like to know. Romance starts with just a glance. So come on, fellas, and take a chance. Aren't they great? Erskine Hawkins and his wonderful band. And if you come in here single and go out double, you'll stay out of trouble. <laughs> So here's the pleasure and pain of the single life. It seems even swingle still just another way of saying alone. With quiet desperation, they preside over their endless rejection.